Welcome to this video on the basic use of functions. My name's Andy Wicks, and let's start with a definition of what a function is. A function is a block of code that you've given a name. So you can use that name as if it was another command in Python. You're creating your own piece of code. Your program can call this block of code as often as it needs to. Functions are used to make finding and correcting errors easier. They also make finding and correcting errors quicker. You write less code and all the logic stays in one place, which means that if you want to make any changes, you've only got one place to look, one place in which to make those changes. Now I'm going to tell you that you can send information to a function and you can get information out of a function, but we'll come on to the detail of that shortly. Let's start by having a look at our first function. Functions always come at the top of a program. That's so that the rest of your program knows what it has to do if you call this new command that you've created. Functions should have two blank lines above them and two blank lines below them. That's standard PEP8 and makes it easier to find your functions. Now, as you can see, a function starts with DEF, DEF, which is short for define. So you're going to define a new Python command called add comments. After that, there are the round brackets and then a colon. I'm going to explain what goes in the round brackets later on. But that colon, as you know, means that we have to indent the code that comes after that. And then we know that everything that's indented is part of this definition for this new function that we're creating. Now, this particular function isn't very clever. All it does is it prints out, always put comments at the start of a function, and it adds a blank line in front and behind it. I'm going to explain the use of the return in a moment, but your comment at the beginning should start with triple quotes, and it should explain to the user what this function does, so that any other programmer coming after you can see exactly what it is you're trying to do. So whenever our program says add comments, what the program will go away and do is print out a new line, always put comments at the start of a function, and then another new line. And we can call that as often as we want to. Now let's have a look at a more complicated function. This function that also starts with def is called print reminder one, because as you'll probably guess, there's going to be a print reminder two. It's got the round brackets and the colon. We've got our comments at the start of the function, and this time it's going to return a variable called reminder. So whenever we call this function, it's going to send a piece of information back that we can then capture and use in whatever way we like. So we're going to have a variable called reminder. And that reminder is new line, always put comments at the start of functions, new line. So when we call this function, it'll say something like reminder equals and then print reminder one. And in that way, we're going to get whatever it is that's in this reminder variable. Now that, again, is not a very useful function. So let's make it a little bit more useful. Here we have print reminder 2, which is the second way of printing a reminder. We have our usual colon to say this is a block of code. We have the comments to say exactly what's happening in this uh, particular block of code. And we're going to return something called reminder. But in this case, it's going to return some equal signs followed by a new line and rem. Rem is whatever we're sending to this function. And you'll notice that is what goes between the brackets. And we can send as many things as we like to the function. If we had three things to send, we'd have rem1, rem2, age. 
for example, in these brackets. But in this case, there's only one thing to go in. So what this function will do is it will take a, a piece of text that you put in as a reminder and return a piece of text with the slash ends in it the way that we want it to be. Now, the final version of the function does something even more exciting. This function called split date takes in a variable called dt, which I'm going to assume is a date. And that date is formatted in a particular way. It's formatted as day slash month slash year. And yes, I know that's the British format, but hey, humor me. So the thing coming in, the parameter coming in, is dt. And that's in the dummy format. What it sends back is the day, month, and year, all as integers. So we take in a piece of text, we do something to it, and what goes back are three whole numbers. So it takes in the date, it splits it, according to the slash, which will give it three pieces. And as you know, the pieces are numbered from zero. So the day is going to be bit zero, and we have to turn that into an integer. We turn bit one, which is the month, into an integer, and we turn the year, which is bit two, into an integer. So in this way, we can get three pieces of information out, having just put one piece of information in. And that is a far better use for a function. That's the sort of thing we do more often. We put information in, we take information out. The function usually does something. The technical term for a function that doesn't return anything and doesn't take any input is usually a method. But that doesn't matter here. We'll call them functions all the way through. But I'm sure what you'd like is to see this code run. So let's give it a whirl. Here we have the code that calls each of these functions. The first function I'm going to call is add comments. And all that will do is print out, always put comments at the start of a function. Now let's try the second function. Here You'll remember it produces the same result, but in a slightly different way. It returns a result. So what it's doing is it's taking the command print and it's printing out whatever comes back from print reminder one. Now we could just as easily have said new reminder equals print reminder one, print new reminder. But I'm doing it all in one go. Because, hey, I'm a programmer. So print, print reminder one, will display, always put comments at the start of functions. That's exactly what we'd expect it to do. Print reminder two asked us to give it some information. So which reminder do you want? In this case, I want programming is easy when you know how. And it is. So we're going to send print reminder two a piece of information. Programming is easy when you know how. And we're going to get some information back. Programming is easy when you know how. And print that. If I run this, I get programming is easy when you know how. And it's got those equal signs above and below it, just to show that it's different to the command before. Finally, we're going to take three variables out of split date. So I put in my birthday. It splits it according to the slashes, and then it prints out you were born in and the integer year. Notice that with year, I could now do arithmetic, such as multiply it by 365 or whatever. But I don't need to do that for this example. So when I run this piece of code, I get you were born in 1934. So I've put one piece of information into split date. And I've got three pieces of information out. You now know everything you need to know about how to use functions efficiently. But the next program will show you how these are implemented in a real program.